Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Well, for heaven's sake. Matt. Yeah, what, Doc? Look at that coming. It's a Surrey. What? A four-passenger Surrey. Oh, well, that's the first one of those I've seen west of St. Louis. What? That's Kitty up there with a the driver, isn't it, Doc? Kitty? Oh, no. why, so it is. <laughs> but who is the driver? I don't know. I don't know the one sitting in the back, either. See, that's pretty fancy for Dodge. Yeah. Those are a couple of dudes, if I ever saw any. Mm, green as squash. Hi, Matt. Hello, Doc. Hi, Kitty. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. Uh, you. Uh, haven't met anyone? Haven't even seen them, Kitty. There they are. Marshal Dillon, Doc Adams, Mr. Samuel Sprague, and Clifton Bunker. Hello, Mr. Sprague. Hi, Mr. Mr. Bunker. <laughs> Quite a wagon you gentlemen have. We brought it with us, Doctor, on the train. We've been all over the country around here in that Surrey, haven't we, Bunker? What are you, uh, prospectors? No, Doc. We're writers, Doctor, from New York. Writers? Did you ever read anything by Ned Buntline? Oh, then you're not reporters. You you write uh, make-believe stories. Well, we want to write true stories, Doctor, but there doesn't seem to be much material around here. I'm uh, kind of disappointed. There hasn't been a gunfight since they arrived, and every Indian in Kansas seems to be growing old on a reservation. We're not going to get any stories this way. You mentioned that writer Ned Buntline, Mr. Spring. Uh, I met him once through Jim Bridger. Oh, yes, he wrote a lot of stories about Jim Bridger's adventures. Mm-hmm. Most of them were lies. They made Bridger look like a fool. They also made Jim Bridger famous, Marshal. Like Wyatt Earp? Buntline wrote about him, too. Anything wrong with being famous? I guess it depends how you get that way, Mr. Sprig. Yeah, go stir him up some Indians, Matt. A few massacred families out here would... Oh, that'd make nice reading in New York. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's go get a drink, Kitty. Uh, you two go ahead. I'll join you. All right. Good day, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Well, you were a great help. What do you care about them, Kitty? I don't think a series of stories in the New York papers would hurt Dodge any, do you? Oh, oh, she's thinking of business, Matt. I, I keep forgetting she's half owner of the Long Branch now. So that's it, huh? Of course it is want anybody killed, but you might at least be polite to him. Haven't got time, Kitty. What? I got to ride up to Hayes City tomorrow. May not be back for a week. Good. You want to come along? Ha! Huh. Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Pack 
packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Calvary up ahead there, Mr. John. Yeah. Pretty sloppy looking, ain't they? Half of them ain't even setting their saddles straight. Uh-huh. Yeah, not that I blame them, none. Riding them terrible McClellan saddles. I think they've been ahead, Chester. They must have had a fight. Hey, by golly, I think you're right. Let's pull up. Some of them boys is wounded. And look there. A couple of them tied across their saddles. They're dead. I think I know that Lieutenant, Chester. Yeah, it's Lieutenant Bain. What in the world do you suppose has happened? Company! Company! Hello, Lieutenant. Can we give you any help? Might have this morning, Marshal. Indians? Chief Little Hawk. Little Hawk? The Pawnee? Haven't you heard, Marshal? What? I've been in Hayes City for a week. Little Hawk and 40 Braves jumped reservation four or five days ago. Well, he's one of the most peaceful chiefs in Kansas, Lieutenant. Look at my patrol, Marshal. Two dead and half a dozen wounded. I don't understand it. Neither does anybody else. He wiped out a family over on Walnut Creek yesterday, and he hit us this morning. You're the only cavalry in the field? Yeah. Funny thing, we picked up Little Hawk's trail right here, Marshal, right out of that grove of trees. Huh? It's a pawnee burying ground. Guess they stopped there to make medicine or something. Well, see you at the dance, Marshal. Yeah, Lieutenant. Uh, I- I'm sorry it happened. Yeah, so am I. Up, buddy! Up, Come on, Chester. Them poor devils, they really got it, didn't they? Well, they're not far from Fort Dodge now. Where are we going? To look at this Pawnee graveyard? Not exactly a graveyard, Chester. Well, what is it, then? You'll see. What's all them poles sticking up over there with them platforms on? Graves, Chester. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. They bury people up in the air on them platforms, don't they? Yeah, that's right. These is all new, Mr. Dillon. At least they're empty. There ain't no corpses laying on them. Yeah. Little Hawk must have come by here to pick up his dead and take him with him. What for? I don't know. They must have been in an awful hurry. Look at that platform over there. Uh-huh. It's half tore down. Yeah, I noticed it. The rest of them ain't. No. I declare, I, 
I don't feel right here, Mr. Newman. Neither do I, Chester. All right, come on, let's go. First drinks, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. I swear my throat's solid alkaline. Yes, yeah, so my... no, hey, get it. Yeah, she wants you, Mr. Dillon. Uh, I'll join you at the bar, Chester. All right, sir. Say, Alvin. Yes, How long have you been back, Matt? Oh, since noon, Kitty. I had a lot of business at the bank. Oh? <laughs> well, not personal business, you understand. Matt, uh, you remember Sprague and Bunker? No. Are those dudes still in town? Matt, they want to talk to you. Now, Kitty, their stories aren't going to put Dodge on the map. It's already there. Texas cattle did it, not New York writers. Please, Matt. I'm asking. <laughs> well, if you're going to turn female on me. You forget I'm part owner of this place now. I can have you thrown out. Yeah? <laughs> I'd sure be talking to those two. Oh, right there, Matt, at that table. You see him? No. Well, then walk around a while. You'll find him. I'm going to talk to Chester. Good evening, gentlemen. Marshal Dillon. Sit down, Marshal. Sit down. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marshal, we've got a proposition to make you... Oh, you tell him, Sprig. Well, Marshal, we heard about those Indians. Uh, some soldiers from Fort Dodge were in here a while ago. And? We want to find them. What are you talking about, Sprig? Well, I don't mean find them exactly, but the next time they attack some settler, we want to be the first to get there. That way we'd really see what it's like, Marshal. Maybe we could even talk to the survivors, if there are any. We'll pay you well. Pay me for what? For guiding us, for taking us there. What do you say, Marshal? You want me to guide a couple of vultures like you? That's uncalled for, Marshal. Why don't you go back to New York, huh? They got plenty of corpses there. And they're a whole lot prettier than anything the Indians might leave for you. Now, look here, Marshal. There's no getting along with him at all, Spring. Well, you certainly didn't talk to them very long, Matt. Is that my drink, Chester? Uh, no, sir, it ain't. No, it ain't. It ain't. It's my... It's my... It's... <laughs> it's yours now. Pour yourself another one. I'll buy it. Well, thank you. I don't mind if I do. Oh, uh, Mr. Dunn, look at this little dido Miss Kitty's been showing me. Huh? Well, they had it hung up behind the bar there. See, it's all carved out of bone. Here, let me see that, Chester. Interesting, isn't it, Matt? Where did this come from, Kitty? Well, it's an Indian totem of some kind. Sprig and Bunker brought it Sprig in. Sprig and Bunker? Uh-huh. Well, they were just lending it to us to hang behind the bar. Yeah. Now what? I'll go with him, Chester. Well, I'll go. Where did your men get this totem? We've had enough of you for tonight, Marshal. <laughs> now, I want to know where you got this totem, Sprig. You're joking me. Then tell me. We got it from a soldier. A soldier? What soldier? A private from Fort Dodge. His name was Roger Harlow. We bought it. What is it, Mr. Dillon? Chester, we're riding out to Fort Dodge in the morning. And time to wake up Major Honeyman. <laughs> Marshal, B Company moved out yesterday. My judgment of the situation is that they'll make almost immediate contact. I see, Major. But I don't like your insinuation that the cavalry is responsible for Little Hawk jumping reservation. I'll admit garrison life's dull, but no soldier in my command would want action that badly. Where's your proof, Marshal? Right here, Major. Why? 
Hawkins is a Pawnee totem. It's more than that, Major. It's a Fox Clan totem. Little Hawks Clan. Yeah. Well, I've told you where I think it came from. Now let's get that private in here and settle this, huh? Marshal, I'll feed him to Little Hawk if this is true. Oh, Sergeant! Sergeant Grimes! Oh, uh, what would you say his name is? Harlow. Roger Harlow. Mm. Yes, Major? Now, Sergeant, you pride yourself on knowing every man at Fort Dodge. As regimental sergeant, I consider it my duty, sir. What company is Private Roger Harlow assigned to? Private Roger Harlow? Yes, that's right. There ain't no Roger Harlow on this post, Major. There never had been. Where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your kitchen? Getting ready for Sunday supper? Maybe in your living room, relaxing. Or out driving? Say, be sure and watch the road. But remember, there's pleasure ahead when you smoke Chesterfield. When you satisfy yourself with Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy. The most. Fine sprig and bunker last night, man? No. no. We finally learned at the stable they drove out of Dodge in that Surrey yesterday morning. You going after him? Yeah. As soon as Chester comes with our horses. What do you think they're up to now, man? I wish I knew, Doc. Mm. They ought to be hung. Hey, Doc. Huh? Look over there. Coming into the plaza. Oh, yeah, well. You won't have to ride after him now. <laughs> no. Them and their fancy Surrey. Yep, Matt. Yep. Where are you going? Hello. Hello, Marshal. Get on, Bunker. You too, Spring. Now. We saw it, Marshal. We saw practically all of it. It was exciting. And with no help from you, either. Oh, it was magnificent. The cavalry really got their own back this time. What are you talking about, Marshal? The Indians. The cavalry practically wiped them out. What? Yesterday, Marshal, just before dark. We were driving along the Arkansas and heard all that gunfire and commotion up ahead. And we got there just in time to see what few Indians were left running for their lives. They killed all but half a dozen of them. And they got that chief little hog, too. You saw this, huh? Now, Marshal, we wouldn't be making it up, would we? And I might add that it's about time we saw something around here. You know, Sprig, I was talking to Doc Adams over there when you drove in. You know what he'd like to see? No. He'd like to see you and Bunker hung. What? And so would I. What's the matter with you, Marshal? Why did you tell me a soldier gave you that totem? Oh, you... You found out. Why did you lie about it? 
Because you were choking me and because I didn't know what you'd do next. Or why. Why? You men robbed a Pawnee grave. You stole a totem, a totem of Little Hawk's clan. Well, that's all we took. Who cares about a savage idol, anyway? Little Hawk did. He went on the warpath. Oh, nonsense, Marshal. Over a fool thing like that? Marshal, you're not standing up for a bloodthirsty redskin, are you? I knew Little Hawk Spring. He was a good chief. He was a brave man and a peaceful one. Till you shamed him. <laughs> well, he's he's not shamed now, Marshal. He's a good Indian. <laughs> now you get out, both of you. You get out today. Enough men have died because of you. And you go back to New York... And when you get there, you'll write a story about a marshal who'd have liked nothing better than handing you over to Little Hawk. If he were still alive. Our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, there's a saying on the frontier, kicking won't get you nowhere unless you're a mule. <laughs> well, next week, a man complains that somebody's trying to kill him and isn't believed until it happens. But that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, John Daner, Joseph Kearns, Lou Krugman, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.